Okay, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, confidence uh, intervals versus prediction intervals. So this can be a little bit a source of confusion for uh, people learning statistics for the first time. So I'm going to go ahead and try to kind of clarify the, the basic ideas here. But before I, before I start, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, populations and samples. So a population, you can imagine, is, you know, some large group of, of members uh, that you want to try to understand uh, something about. So, for example, uh, let's take a fun example. Let's say that you're, you know, filling uh, uh, beer cans, okay? And you might be working in a large brewery, filling millions of these every day. And you want to understand something, let's say, about the label claim. So, for example, your label claim is 12 ounces, and I'm making millions of these. And I can't possibly determine the volume of every single container. But what I can do is I can actually take a sample okay, from that population. Okay? So that population will have a mean and a variance, okay, just not known to me. And I will draw a sample, and from that I will calculate a sample average and a sample variance. So I've collected a sample here. Okay, I'm going to calculate the sample er average and the sample variance. And from those values, okay, I should be able to say something about the population mean and the population variance. Okay, so this is a very simplified view of, of how uh, you know, we're using a random sample to say something about a larger population. So where do confidence intervals and prediction intervals come into this question? So here, let's say, is our sample. Of, let's say we've collected some uh, beer cans, and these are, let's say, the fill volume in ounces. And I've calculated, let's say, an average value. Okay, so the average is kind of a balance point. I can calculate the sample variance as well. A confidence interval will tell me where it will tell me how confident we are that the true mean of that population lies in a certain region. So, for example, I calculate the average, okay, which will give me an estimate of the population mean. But it will also say that that true population mean could lie between these two numbers here. Okay? And the reason for this confidence interval is because there's sampling variability. In other words, if we take another sample from that population, we're going to get a slightly different number okay, for the average than we did the first time. But in general, those averages should be pretty close to the population mean. Okay? And how close they are is determined by this confidence interval. And if we would have uh, collected a larger sample, okay, that confidence interval would have become smaller okay, because we would have had more certainty in the actual sample average. So, uh, you know, now we have also this variability in the individual points. Okay, so now we're looking at a prediction interval. So a prediction interval basically tells us how confident are we that an individual value lies in this region. So again, you have the population. You don't know anything about the mean or variance. But by sampling, okay, we can use the uh, sample average and the sample variance and say something about the individual points as well. Okay, so this is a little bit wider, okay, because we're looking at the, the behavior of the individual points. And again, this is important, uh, let's say, from a compliance standpoint, because if you're stating, let's say, a label claim of 12 ounces on a beer can, okay, the implication is that your population mean is producing a 12 ounce container. So it's very important to actually understand if your process mean is actually matching your label claim. Now you can also apply this to regression modeling as well. So for example we have some data values here uh, that kind of show the relationship between some uh, dependent variable here uh, or independent variable here and some dependent variable here. Okay, and this blue line is the fitted line. Okay, so it represents a population uh, fit or slope, okay, of some population. 
And the confidence interval just tells us basically that, you know, we are 95% confident that the true mean regression line lies between these two values, okay? And similarly, you know, we have the prediction interval. Uh, again, we have the fitted line here. And again, now we have prediction intervals which tell us something about the individual points. So it's saying basically that we're 95% confident that an individual point would lie between these two values here. So that's kind of the basics of it. Uh, I really didn't show any math here or anything like that. Uh, it's you know easy to find and look up. But uh, essentially that is the fundamental differences between confidence intervals and uh, prediction intervals. I hope this helped and uh, we'll talk again.